everyone welcome to my channel for those of you who don't know who i am my name is juan carlos and in today's video i'm just gonna go over some of the supplies that you should consider when going into architecture mainly in your first year of architecture into design one so some of these uh, supplies are from personal experience and supplies that i use constantly from design one up to design five and it's supplies that I live by and consider. I'm also gonna go over some of the bigger regrets that I did when it came to buying supplies and kind of giving you guys the reasoning behind the type of supplies that I use and why I use them and their benefits. So just stay tuned as I go through each individual supplies. The order that I'm gonna go in is kind of going from the paper to kind of the utensils that you use to draw on the paper and kind of other accessories that you should consider in terms of making sure that your drawings are as best as possible and that you're using the equipment that is correct to make those possible. So to start off, I'm just gonna do the most important tool, at least in my opinion, that you should always have around is a sketchbook. So the sketchbook that I particularly use is this one right here. I got this one at Blix, and this is just a 5x5 by 0.85 five by five sketchbook. Oh. And this is just something I highly recommend to be a part of your kind of daily routine. Now, the reasoning behind me recommending this book is because it just is the best method of describing and drawing out your ideas visually on paper and it kind of gives you and your professor a visual of what you're thinking and where you're taking your project and in the direction that you're taking it to see if it's the correct one. So in this case, I'm just going to show you one example and this is from my Design 5 project and it was just a very easy and messy sketch of what I wanted to accomplish for this project showing structural systems and some other small kind of details of how I wanted the forms to look like. Now this is just easy for the professor to say and kind of give me some critique on my uh, method of designing and just give him an idea of what I want to do and for him to guide me as I design. So I do recommend you guys to get one of these and in this size in particular or, or not smaller but this size is ideal just because the biggest mistake that I made when I started is that I had a large sketchbook. Now, because I had a large sketchbook, I was more likely to leave it behind because it was just very uncomfortable to carry around in a setting where the professor may wanted you to kind of take you on a field trip. Having a small sketchbook allows you to draw at ease because you are able to carry it and it's easy just to have it everywhere and store it everywhere. So that's why I highly recommend getting a smaller sketchbook. So the second uh, piece of paper that I want to talk about, tracing paper. Now, tracing paper is an important part of architecture just because you are going to be tracing everything to kind of perfect it and learn from it. So I recommend personally to get the white tracing paper. Now I got this one at Blix, as you can see. Uh, those are the specifications and I will be including all of the items that I am recommending in the description below so that you guys have that. And if I do find any links for supplies on Amazon or somewhere else, I will also include those. So just be on the lookout for those in the uh, description. So some of the tracing papers that are included, and you're gonna be able to see these everywhere that you go for art supplies, is either the white one or the yellow one. So the yellow one looks like this, and they do come in different sizes, so that is the good thing about the tracing paper. So, you are able to have it in different sizes. The only thing is I do not recommend getting the yellow. Now I do have it, but I've never used it uh, in this particular role, but the reasoning behind me not using it often is just because I feel that the color kind of distorts your image and it just makes it a distraction. And it's just easier to avoid distractions if you just go the plain way, which is just regular white and it's the one that I use the most. In this case, I have a new role that um, I just used my previous one. And this roll is super easy to use. I prefer this size in particular because like I said, it's easy to carry and it's just, it's more flexible. And it's really nice to have this kind of just plain contrast to the other one that is just an easier way to sketch out and trace. 
Now, the third kind of paper that I want to talk about is, I guess, the most important in some ways because it's what you're going to use to do your final presentation, and that is on vellum. Now, vellum might be the most expensive part of your architecture drawings, and that is because this roll and just kind of vellum in general is a little bit more expensive. Now, vellum comes in a different and variety of methods, and this is one of them, and this is a roll. But they also come in a pad and the pad also comes in different sizes it all depends on where you buy them but i do highly recommend getting the roll now another mistake that i made in architecture when i started is i used to buy the pads because i thought it was simpler to just have it uh, peel off and have a already cut piece now although that is great when you're starting and you have a specific size that the professor wants and it's within the pad size that is perfectly fine and you should do it. But the thing that comes with it is that you're, li you're limited to the amount of pages you have. The tendency to get the pad is high because of the kind of the already pre-made sheets that you have, but then you're also getting less amounts of sheets per pad. So I do recommend getting the roll because although you do have to cut it, it is better to get it since it includes more paper and you could actually cut it to the whatever size that you want so if the professor asks for a very weird size that the pads do not come in this is a better alternative and i do highly recommend getting this as this paper is the best for final presentations it looks the cleanest and it's just the best way to go now the next tool that you are going to hear a lot about in architecture is the scale scale is very important in architecture as it's kind of the method of us to relate a design to real life or to a real size so scales are there's different types of scales first of all this is an architectural scale so the way you tell is usually they label them right there as you can see as an architectural scale now once they label them you know that this is the correct one there are different scales there's an engineering scale and that's something that you may use later on for site planning but in this particular case, I'm just gonna talk about the architectural scale. The architectural scale is very important. Like I said, it's what relates your drawings, your design to a real life measurement. Now, the scale here that I have includes a lot of different scales, sizes, uh, ranging from uh, 1 8 to uh, 1 half. So it's, there's a lot, 1 16, there's a lot of sizes here that you can use for your scale. Now, I recommend getting the plastic. And the reasoning behind that is, and why I'm saying that is because they have a metal aluminum alternative. Now, these tend to fall a lot. And I remember from my first semester is like, when the room is quiet, somebody's presenting, and you drop one of these, everybody is gonna hear this in the entire floor. <laughs> because this makes a really metallic noise when it falls, of course. But that's not the only reason. The main reason that I'm not recommending it is because one, they're expensive. They're more expensive than these. And two, you're gonna go through scales a lot. You're gonna lose them, you're gonna break them. So if you're gonna spend money on a scale and lose it, I, just because you're just gonna be wasting too much money every time you lose one. So I do recommend always getting this one since it's a cheaper alternative and it's just easier to kind of like find and replace. I'm going to talk about the pencils that most professors are expecting you to use and it's just because of the different types of leads that they have and the different types of strengths. So when you're first starting, they're going to ask you for particular pencils and this is because of their lead or because of the style that they are. So one of the bigger mistakes that I made is I opted to buy these. Now these come in the 0 0.5, 0 0.7, the 0 0.8, the one that we all know. Now these are more expensive just because they are metal. And while they are nice to use, it is just easy to lose. And by the time you kind of go through these, it's just a waste of money when you could have used just a regular pencil that had the same lead type. So that is why I don't recommend this, but what I do recommend is getting this pack. This pack, if I would have found it when I first started architecture, is the pack that I would have used. 
just because this comes in a variety of different lead types and is affordable. It has 12 pencils within and I got this from Blix as well but I've seen these on Amazon and it's just the best combination of pencils that you can find specific, especially if you're going into architecture for the first time. This is just the ideal pack that you want to have and it just gives you everything you may need for starting architecture and having the best drawings possible. Now when it comes to kind of drawing and writing you always are expected to write your name. You're always expected to write information on your drawings. And because of this, there's a lot of things that you could use for that. You could use uh, rulers, you could use your parallel bar if you have a drafting table or your T-square. Now, I do recommend you guys invest in one of these, which is a guide ruler. Now, this is an awesome method to use because it does have a flat side that you can put on your parallel bar or your T-square and kind of make your drawings, make your letterings and make all these other things possible in the best manner. So it makes it very clean and professional at the end so that your presentations come out sharp. So I do recommend getting one of these. Now you're gonna see that a lot of them, of the brands that I use or a lot of architecture students use are Alvin Westcott and that is just because they are the main manufacturers of a lot of the equipment that we use here uh, in the architecture program at least so that is something that you should consider getting as it is a really great aid for a lot of details so now because we're using pencils and using a lot of uh, equipment that involves smudging and making mistakes at the beginning um, you do want to have a good eraser so I do have a few because we're doing small details you want to have different types now I do recommend finding a pencil eraser that has a thinner tip or a square tip just because you want them to be thin as well because it just allows you to erase minute details without erasing so much with a bigger eraser so in particular these are the ones that I got from Amazon and they are from Mono Zero Really nice brand to use, but I also invested in getting this Helix automatic eraser. Now, while this one does have a bigger tip, it is easier to erase faster since it does come in an electronic. So because of that, it's just easier to get by some harder drawings that you maybe press down too hard and it's just easier to get it out. But these are better for minute details. Now, in the case that you don't have a small eraser at the time or you lose yours, what is the next best step is to get one of these. Now, this is a, a erasing shield. Now, this erasing shield is what makes using a regular eraser on drawings possible because it has all these different openings with different sizes for you to kind of erase a particular spot without erasing any other detail. Now this is by Westcott and these are something that you're going to go through really fast so just make sure that you know you get a little get a bunch of these because they're not too expensive and they're they come in handy all the time. So this is something to consider to have on hand. The next stage is kind of like when you're reaching a final presentation stage and this is where you want to kind of sharpen your lines and create kind of this nice and crisp final presentation and when I started architecture I just used a sharpie. I like the sharpie because it had a nice sharp tip that's the one that you want to get not the, the bigger tip one and I just outlined the lines that I made but you know you could use a pen or any other kind of tool that kind of creates a sharp and crisp line. Then in design two and three I discovered Prismacolors and Micron pens and these are honestly the best and I do recommend getting four specifically and they are the BR the one, the three, and the five. Now, as you can see, they, they tell them on the, they said that on the cap, and they are Micron and Prisma. So just Micron. I will include everything down in the description, so that way you know what I recommended. That way you're able to look back and even look at options that I consider better than others. So I will also be looking for links to, uh, websites that include these items, including Amazon, for you guys to easily look for and buy them. Now, if you're doing plans, you are expected to um, 
kind of shade over the areas that you're cutting. Usually you're cutting around like six feet, four feet, and you wanna be shading that. Now people use markers of different types. I first started um, Copic. So my first year I got Copics. Now they are expensive, and but they are honestly the best. And in particular, I got these two, which is the C5 and N4. And the reason why I love these is because they have two sides. Now, they have a sharp tip side, which is great for getting into corners and drawing straight lines. And then they do have a brush side. Now, these honestly last forever. I had these since design one. I've only fully used one. So there were a set of three that I got and I've fully used one and these still work very well. So I do highly recommend getting these because they blend super nicely. And when you draw with them behind the vellum to make for a great presentation at the end. Now, when you're kind of all done, maybe you have some kind of particles from erasing from all that, you could erase it all or like push it off by hand or you could shake your paper, but I don't recommend doing any of that because you could either smudge or kind of crush or ruin your drawing that you spent hours doing. And especially if it's a final presentation, you wanna take as much precaution as possible. So I do recommend getting this brush. It's by Westcott as well, they sell them on Amazon and they're really awesome to have because you could just brush it and it does not smudge as much. So I do highly recommend getting this tool as it just kind of does a lot of the work for you. Now, when you're first starting architecture, they're always gonna recommend you to have a drafting table. And drafting tables, I don't know if you guys know, but they're very expensive. They could go from the 200s to almost a thousand for the fancier ones. Now, because of this, I don't recommend it. It's just a non-efficient way to spend money because at the end, you're going to get into design eight and nine, and it's just going to be less hand drawings that you're gonna do. You're gonna be mostly doing digital work. And because of that, it's like your drafting table almost becomes a regular table that you could have bought anyway. So I do recommend investing in a T-square. And if you guys don't know what a T-square is, is it looks like this. This is a very small version of it. I don't use this often. I tend to use the ones that you can see in the back, which are bigger and they go up to 24 to 36 inches. This one in particular is just a regular 12 inch ruler. But this is what it looks like on camera. This you can see is just a regular T-square as it's named. And this is just kind of the best alternative to a drafting table because this has a lip on it where you could push it against your table, your countertop, as long as it has a straight edge, you could use it as almost a drafting board. So because of this, I always recommend to get these at least two, one that is small and one that is larger for you to do bigger drawings and they're relatively affordable. They do go into the 20 range and up. Some are cheaper depending on the size and the material that they're using. So some are wood and some are metal or steel. Some are, you know, other materials, but I do recommend getting one of those since they will come in handy for drawing straight lines and straight edges. The next tool that I highly recommend, and this is helpful when you're doing sections or you're doing other drawings. So these triangles do come in handy, specifically uh, in axonometrics and perspectives. So you do wanna have a 45 degree angle and some other angles that, um, triangles that help you draw those. And as you can see in the back, I do have quite a bit because I do tend to use them a lot when I do sketches and drawings, uh, or at least I used to use them a lot. So that's something I do recommend. Now there are metal versions of them. I don't recommend because they smudge and I got that from experience, but I do recommend getting this Westcott one. This one you should always have at least a 45. And the good thing about this particular one is that it has a metal edge to it, which is super great when it comes to using an X-Acto knife to cut or to draw a nice line and it doesn't kind of smudge on the plastic. So I do highly recommend getting that particular one as it's the best to use. Now, when it comes to X-Acto knives, there is no particular one that I prefer. All X-Acto knives are honestly equal. 
in the sense of their functionality especially when you're just starting you really don't have to worry about what exact knife to go for it's all the same so it's just up to preference of which one you decide to get i like the exacto knife brand one because it just comes with adjustable uh, blades that you can switch out and that's kind of pretty cool now when you're finally presenting some things that you want to consider and this is just some final tips before i get to the final item that i will recommend is kind of like when you're presenting how you're gonna pin up now when you're pinning up you don't want to have any distraction on your paper because then it just offers a distraction for your juror and what you want to do is you want to make sure that the juror is focused on your work and that's it you don't want to have any additional distractions on your work so most of the time i've always been recommended to use this kind of beige tape this tape is almost like painter's tape that it comes off really easily and it doesn't tear the paper. Now, one mistake that I did make when I started architecture is that I used blue tape or tape dots. Now, you would think those are easier to use since they're small circular tapes and, you know, they just hide easily. Unfortunately, they come with logos. And because of the logo, it becomes a big distraction it's best in terms of pinning up in your initial start. So I do recommend using this type of tape since it's thin. You could use the bigger tape uh, for bigger projects as long as it's a light color and neutral color that you can hide, it's perfect fine. But another option that I do recommend highly is getting pins and pins that are either transparent or white that blend in with it. There's a bunch of these in particular that are clear. I don't have the clear ones with me right now, but I do have these metallic ones. I don't recommend using anything solid as it offers again a distraction for your juror and you want to make sure that your drawing is the main focus. So I do recommend getting pins instead of tape because you can reuse these multiple times and it saves money so this is the best alternative. Now for the last uh, piece of supplies that I recommend highly in getting kind of relates to all the stuff that I just said and that is how to keep it safe. Now, most of the time, you want to have all of the supplies that you spend money on in a very nice spot where you can carry it and you know it's there. And the best thing to do is get a toolbox. Now, I have this toolbox right here, um, and it's the best toolbox that I've ever used. It's by Artport. I got this at Blix again, but I will find an alternative for it. The reason why I like this one is because it has tiers. Now, these tiers are great for holding all different types of tools store anything you can think of in here mechanical pencils uh cutting tools almost everything you can think of so i have all my pencils here uh that i've shown you in my case in the 12 case and i just store everything in here and although this might be a little bit higher in price range because of the tiers this is kind of the the box that i use often to kind of collect and store all my items and kind of this is this is kind of the last piece that I highly recommend in getting because it just stores everything and it organizes everything in the best way. And because of this, this is the, the way that I have been able to keep everything together. Well, hopefully this video is helpful for a lot of you who are interested in architecture and kind of wanted a breakdown of what supplies to consider to be the most important when going into the first year of architecture. And this is just kind of based off of my experience, but I hope that it's helpful for you guys and that you like this type of content. I will be going over some other helpful tips and other helpful um, type of content for you guys to go over uh, kind of the best way to present and other forms of information for you guys about architecture. So please leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and let me know how I did on this video. Let me know what you recommend for the next video. and.